Hello and welcome to this presentation in which we look at sweep meshing with solid shell elements when using this ANSYS Workbench Mechanical interface. Let's start with a demonstration of creating a solid shell set of elements in one simple body. Here we have a solid plate. We go to the mesh branch, we right click, and we insert a method. Choose the geometry and apply it here. Go down to Method and switch from Automatic to Sweep. Now the details you see offered are for ordinary sweeping. I'm going to turn to Source Target Selection and change it to, I could use either Automatic Thin or Manual Thin. If I pick Manual Thin, I can indicate where to start the sweep. Right here on Source, I can choose Faces, choose this front face and hit apply. Now it knows where to begin the sweep. Because I have just a one body part, I can go down to sweep number of divisions and indicate the number of divisions I might like to see. Suppose I put in four. If I go up to mesh now, I'm ready to go, but there's something I've missed. Element option solid. That would give me, if I get mid-side nodes here, it would give me 20 noded bricks, the solid 186 element. But I can choose to set it to solid shell. These are 8 noded bricks, specially designed to bend around the XY plane in the element coordinate system. So it's set to solid shell. Because it's set to solid shell, mid-side nodes are dropped. It's grayed out. The solid shell elements are 8 noded bricks. And now I can apply the mesh. Go to Mesh, right-click, Generate Mesh. And you can see if I zoom in that I have four elements through the thickness. Now I have a bit of a mess on the front face. I can go to Mesh, right-click, and Insert Face Meshing. Choose that face and apply it here. Now you'll see a cleaner-looking mesh. Go to the Mesh branch, right-click, Generate Mesh, and there we have clean rows and columns on this simple rectangular face, and four elements through the wall. Note the aspect ratio of these elements. They will bend well because they are solid shell elements, solid shell 190. Multiple elements through the wall thickness like this aren't required to get reasonably good bending behavior out of these elements. Multiple elements through the wall like this might be to track plastic failure or perhaps to have a complicated temperature gradient going in the through wall thickness direction. That would be up to the user, but it would be quite common to in fact have only one element in the through wall thickness direction. Now let's turn to a more complex model. Here we are in the ANSYS Workbench interface. Let's have a look at this geometry. You can see three parts. The first is a multi-body part, and it has six bodies inside it. They have shared faces between them, and it will turn out that this makes swept meshing with solid shell elements a bit more difficult for the user. Here is a single body. By itself, it's not a multi-body part. And here is a body it's a multi-body part with just two things inside it, and they are in the, what I'll call, through thickness direction. Let's go look at the ramifications for meshing. You'll see a number of meshing controls here. We've created six sweep method objects to control the six bodies in this large multi-body part. In each of these sweep methods, we've gone in, indicated a body, the method is sweep. We've asked for manual thin. We'd get the same effect if we asked for automatic thin. When we have a multi-body part, if we ask for manual thin, this software interface permits only one element in the sweep direction. And that's true whether we're looking at the bodies in a multi-body part that's complex like this. They all come out the same way. 
only one element in the sweep direction. It's grayed out and you can't modify it. If we go to a control for the single part, not a multi-body part, we can go to sweep, manual thin or automatic, and it will permit us to indicate how many elements we want in the sweep direction. So you'll see, if we look at the mesh, it's three layers thick. They are solid shell elements, so it can follow quite complex bending behaviors, even though these are low-order bricks. Just eight nodes per element, no mid-side nodes. If we come over here, because it's a multi-body part but only in the through thickness direction, a user might hope that they could control layering, but in fact, the software detects that this first body is in a multi-body part and again only permits number of elements in the thickness direction. It's grayed out and it's set to one. Here we are manual thin, but you have to tell it to be solid shell and if you do that then mid-side nodes are grayed out. So you have to be quite careful. Even though you indicate manual thin, you'll want to go and check that it is set to solid shell or else you'll just get ordinary eight-node bricks that don't have the special property of bending like a shell element. I should add that if you've set element option to solid, you do have the choice of having mid-side nodes, which could give you 20-node bricks, which sometimes would be desirable. Having made that change now, this one also is set to solid shell, it's an automatic thin. I haven't bothered to indicate the starting face. I'm inheriting it from the body above. Let's go in and update our mesh. There we are. We have a model that's ready to run. I've put some simple controls in. I have fixed faces like this. I have some pressures. I can calculate some deflections. Let's solve this model. And I get the kinds of deformations you'd expect with pressures on plates that are fixed on one edge. We see stresses, kind of result that you'd expect to see, and with more element layers you'll get a little bit more variation in stress from top to bottom, as might be anticipated. We can go in and look at element triads. To actually see them, we need to go to a wireframe view, and something odd that happens with sweeping a mesh with solid shell elements is that the element axes will not necessarily all be the same. You can see the Z axis perpendicular to the solid shell element. One points in the minus global Z direction here. It's coming out in the plus global Z direction. You can see some flipping of where the X and Y axes might lie. Here we played with orientation. Our main interest is that the z-axis be perpendicular to the element. Beyond that, the flipping about of axes doesn't matter too much unless you start plotting stresses, normal stresses in x, y, z, and shear stresses in x, y, z. Here also you see some flipping about of axes, but the z-axis, the blue one, is always perpendicular to the element. It's just something to keep in mind. Let's turn off our wireframe view now then and go back and look at the mesh. Here was a single body, single bodied part, and once again we have been able to request number of elements going through the thickness. In the others we can only have one element through the thickness of a body. The trick that's been used here is that we have split these large plates with a cut in a geometry developer we have multi-body parts, and because we've split these things, we can get a couple of elements through the thickness. But as for the individual bodies, when you're in multi-body parts, unfortunately you only get the choice of one element through the thickness. There then, we have a model using solid shell elements with that sometimes very helpful property that they will bend like a shell element. They can be quite large in the plane, let's go look at one, they can be quite large in the plane in comparison to their thickness and still behave properly in certain applications.
it's worth mentioning that high-order brick elements with mid-side nodes will bend reasonably well around a thin direction, and you might consider them if you have to follow a curved structure. Thank you for joining me.